now it's way back here. Okay, so we oh, we're, we're having technical difficulties, and right now we're back. Looks like there's an effect on it. I know. <laughs> I know, cause that thing looks crispy. It's real crispy. But like live, whenever we move, it moves like it's crazy. I know that um, we got a text message apparently that we used. Like, um, but I don't know if I don't like where it's at. Okay, how we looking? Are we live? Oh no. We and Wayne Draper Schooley is watching. Yeah. Yep. Hey. And yeah. we are live. All right. What's going on, Facebook I and world? We forgot to tag somebody. She was already on, though. I was forgetting no, that was on the last one, though. Yeah. Because she tagged um, We had a rough start, so <laughs> we're going to end soon. So. Technical difficulties. And next time, we'll be, <laughs> we'll we'll be, be live for 10 seconds. Hey, Miranda. No, um, hey, Nicole. Who's, who else is going Shout out everybody tuning in right now <clears throat> because we were live, but it didn't work out. So we see. are going to keep this moving, right? Are we ready? Yep. 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 You are right now. You're tuning into another episode of Life Talk. Life this Talk. is episode number yep. Yep. four and the conclusion of the series we've been doing all the month of October on the relevancy of Jesus Christ. And man, we had some crazy crazy things happened during those episodes comments and and just answer questions it was amazing so today we're going to conclude um just kind of wrap everything up and yeah. we got a, we got a few special things some surprises for y'all so hang in there yeah yeah we got a few, few special i don't things. even know what a surprise i'm gonna be surprised <laughs> g g's gonna give a surprise are y'all announcing y'all news <laughs> no, so, no, 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 no. <laughs> Oh. So, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We are expecting, <laughs> no, we're expecting a song at the end. So, no, th there's always a song at the end. That's kind of the format. We give y'all yes. just a little bit of life talk, and then we will it's not a perform surprise. a song. They, seen no, I, I mean, yeah. it's a treat. Like, oh, it's a treat. It's a treat. Nado. You know what I'm saying? Yep, it's yep. A treat. All right. So, this, this show happens. Erica. So, what's what's been going on with everybody? Yeah. How's everybody alive. doing? How is everybody doing? Is that Erica? Yeah. Erica! I how has, um, how has the series, I apologize in advance, I'm a little stuffy. He's got a how has this series, um, how have you guys received this? Has it been useful? What has been something that stuck and stood out? What's going on, Brother Byron? We, we felt like it was important to um, just to highlight the fact everybody doesn't believe in Jesus, and everybody doesn't believe in Jesus the same way. Mm -hmm. um, so we had to make a distinction, and... We get a lot of feedback, and we have a lot of conversations with people who yep. either don't know or they actually oppose Christianity. Mm. And where we're from, it's not—it's not only they don't believe in Jesus; they they go out and say it's a downright lie, mm -hmm. and they right. look at us a type of way for even believing in it. Right? It, it causes division, you know. And we know Jesus spoke on these things, but it's a real subject. So we didn't want it to be just another group of Christians on Facebook just sharing their little Bible notes. We really felt like this was a need, so we hope that it, it did that. Um, that's what our prayers were aimed for, and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so hopefully it's been a blessing. Let us know. How is Jesus? Is he still relevant this week for y'all <laughs> in 2017? Why or why so, not? Understand. Why is Jesus still relevant? Yeah, yep. why or why not? Absolutely. We've been talking about this all month. And again, we are live here on the couch every Tuesday, couch. As, at least at 7 p.m. We try to be at 7 p.m. Right. Eastern Standard Time. Give or take. And again, give or this take 30 is, minutes. Give, we shout give out or Brian, take 10 minutes. Byron. Yeah, he Byron. shouted out. I said, what up, Byron. brother Byron? Make sure you get your shout outs. Yeah. Sorry you, that we're a little late. But. Yeah. If you don't know who we are, we are Life Music. This is Parallel right here. And this is Cooley High over there. Together, we are Life Music. Um, to present the word and the music to you. So stay tuned this evening. Got home. Day. Yeah. No, they have their own. Oh, she has her own. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. so what what we transitioning yeah. into? Well, um, let's talk about last weekend. Right. Oh wow! Yes. This past weekend. This past weekend. Yeah. This past weekend. Not only um, were we sharing, but what we talk about live in public, we have to live out in private. Right. And so last weekend was an example of that. So, mm -hmm. how did it go for y'all? Did y'all walk Just away this with? past weekend, like a couple days ago. You mean this weekend, right? Pri yeah. This yeah. Saturday, Saturday. Oh, wow. Weekend. It was, yeah. this weekend was crazy. <laughs> like, it went from, we had, we had two performances. They had two performances. Back to back, Saturday right. and Sunday. Right. On Saturday, we were performing at two different places. And on Sunday, we all performed at the yeah. same spot. Mm -hmm. Um, And so Saturday. Saturday, Gordon was actually, Heather couldn't make it, so Gordon was in, where were you at? Middletown, right? Middletown. Yep, Middletown, Hoffer Park. 
Um, it was a church outreach event outside. It was pretty cool. Um, different culture of people, yeah. but it, it was fun. We were the only hip hop act there. Me and shout out to Joey Drumboy. Joey Drumboy. On, on the replay. Did he drum for you? Yeah. Yes. Oh, wow. You didn't, so you didn't he see the video. Killed. If no, y'all didn't see that wow, performance, you missed it out. <laughs> check out Gordon yeah. Reason's page. Like, oh my goodness. I gotta go, I gotta go check him out. Mm -hmm. That was cool. That was cool. Shout out to Mandy. She jumped in. Right? Mandy. Yeah, welcome, welcome back. Technically. Alicia. Welcome Alicia's back. back around. We haven't seen Alicia for a couple weeks. Oh, wow. But it's a, and I know you guys can chime in. There was a big difference between the audience that we shared music for on Saturday mm -hmm. and on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'll let you guys tell why because um, we were all there. So. Well, again, we where we performed on Saturday, we were the only hip hop act as well. We so, were the only hip hoppers in the building. <laughs> yeah, like, and where were you? Uh, in the we building? were at Calvary Chapel. We were at Calvary at Church. Chapel. And Calvary the only, Church. The only melanin um, covered folks. <laughs> 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 right. That means anything. Uh, so right. we were invited to a, a, a youth event oh, no. to oh. perform um, a couple of our songs, and we actually had to switch it up because. It wasn't a youth event. That was it worship night. Event. It was worship was night. Worship oh, why do I keep thinking that was a youth? Okay, yeah, it, was it was a worship, worship night. That was worship night. Yeah, I had the youth event. Yeah, Gordon had the youth event. So, yeah, right. go ahead. We switch it up. We had to switch some of the songs up because we realized that the crowd probably wouldn't be participating as much as we would have liked them to <laughs> if we would have sang one of our songs. So, I mean, um, we didn't get as much as participation, but in the end, when we were done, they all came up to us, and uh, most of them came up to us and told that, told us how much they appreciate what we did, and um, they really were able to hear the lyrics. Um, so, What's up, Vic? I can go and bite people. I that was definitely um, inspiring for us. And then the next day, we Francis. were all at... Where were we at so Francis, uh, we're at the Mano's house. The um, Mano's house in Columbia. Mano's um, right. young, yeah. young adult um, detention Juvenile, center. Yeah. Juvenile detention center. Yeah. Yep. Which is always it's always a blessing to present. Your faith is tested in an environment where everybody doesn't co-sign with you. Mm, yeah. Right. Um, if you have any validity to what you believe, stand in front of somebody that doesn't believe what you believe, and to see how you hold up. Um, these I think these fellas uh, range from 13 to 19. They, they, are, they are convicted felons, <clears throat> but some of them are still in, in too young in the system to be at a full-blown adult prison. Brother Jamal. So when you have, yeah. when hey. you have that much youth and that much brokenness at the same time, mm -hmm. and all you have is some rap lyrics, oh, shoot. what do you say to them? You know My what I mean? Um, they're coming from um, gang violence. They're coming from shooting people. They're coming from... <laughs> Uh, one kid was like 17 and already had three kids and they were all young. of that stuff. A lot of them were um, very young. Oh, man. Because it's, it's more of like a rehab center. Right, Yo, right, right. So a I, lot of them either struggled with addiction or were selling right. drugs. Right, yep. So it, they were like 19 and younger. So imagine imagine you're in that scenario. You're 17, you got booked, you sold some drugs or you, or you overdosed or something like that. Something and then bad. find yourself there and then... They're like, hey, there's some artists coming, and then it's future, and I'm doing, I'm Sandra. doing mask off. So. I'm highlighting Molly and Percocet, and that's exactly what got you in this place to begin with. Exactly. If I'm future, I get to leave with my entourage, mm -hmm. my thousands of dollar check for actually showing up, mm -hmm. and life goes on. For him, he still has to struggle with that hurt and, and that pain. So right. at that moment, the things we do here in, in this kind of controlled environment, it becomes right. more livid. But people actually cling on to, and that's what we're saying, the difference between, like, sharing music with believers who already know. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. at that point, they're going to compare us to Lecrae and everybody else. But in front of people who never heard Christian hip-hop or never heard the gospel in a way that they can relate to in a relevant manner, mm -hmm. you just see their eyes light up. Mm -hmm. Like, yo, I needed to hear that. I hear everything else. I hear the Futures. I hear the Drakes. I hear, but I didn't know that I could be free. I didn't know that there was hope. See you, Eric. And, and so, displayed in a form that I could relate to. So it's always powerful. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just inviting mad people right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sorry. If you're already yeah. watching and you get an I'll, invite from me, it ain't my fault. I'm just, if you get an invite and you don't like <laughs> yeah. it, listen, we're friends. I was, right? I was so, even able to, I was even stretched and challenged to uh, share the gospel. 
Oh wow! Before yeah. we performed, yes. right, right, right. Yeah. I walked up in this. Uh, I, I can't. I went to this. Uh, this play. I was on my way to this play on domestic violence, and um, beforehand there was a, a lecture being um, done on on hip hop. And um, <laughs> <laughs> he's got because they heard this story about fifty million times already because I was so hyped when it happened. <laughs> So I've been getting a lot of slack from these guys. <laughs> We're keeping them humble, you know. What happened was I walked up in there, and I just came in there to talk some hip hop. And as I'm joining the discussion, but you didn't know that that was happening, right? When you yeah, got there, I did, did know because that's why I went early before oh. the show because I knew that lecture was going on. Shout out, Shout Wayne. out Wayne Parr in Brooklyn. Sincere. Brooklyn, sincere. What up, bros? So yep. So I went in there, and it's this like this old white dude. That's talking. He's this Millerville University professor, and he's talking on hip hop, the art of it, the history of it, the controversy of it. Like just talking about hip hop, and it's all types of people in the room. It's young people, old people, black people, white people, all types of people in there, and we're all talking about hip hop. And then I guess they figured out sooner or later that I do hip hop. And the guy that was sitting pretty much a couple of seats away from me asked me, "Hey." Can you share something with us? I want to hear what it sounds like live. And I didn't come in there to rap because I knew that I had a, a performance to do that night. Right. And then I had a performance to do the next day. So I just came in and talked right. hip-hop. Mm -hmm. I wasn't expecting nothing like that. I almost told him, no, I don't do hip-hop because I didn't feel like doing it. <laughs> I didn't feel like... But then I said, you know what? What's rap? <laughs> this would be a great time for me to share the gospel. Mm -hmm. So I was able to pick a verse that allowed me to explain what it meant first. So I had to give them the context of where I was coming from. I had to let them know, look, this is where I started rapping at, and this is the reason why I wrote this. Right. So I had to tell them that I was in the eighth chapter of Romans. And so I was describing to them how God's love, no matter what we go through, we cannot be separated from God's love. Whether it's tough times, whether, it, you know, any trials and tribulations, even prison, even death cannot separate the saint from the love of God. So I was able to explain that to the room that was not all Christian. They're, I'm sure they're, you know, from the, the conversation that was happening and the curse words that were being thrown around, I know that the room wasn't all Christian. The atmosphere wasn't all Christ-like. So I knew that I was presenting something to them that maybe they never even heard before, which was the gospel. And I feel like this Shout year, out, like, we've, been, we've been in more rooms with non-believers than Right. Like, right. And uh, right. when it comes to performing right. and like, right. it's crazy. Cause remember when we went to fruition, oh, when we yeah. performed there, there I think we were the yeah. only believers in the building. <laughs> wow. A couple yeah. of them. There was a couple. Right. There's, right. A, there's right. usually a couple. There's usually a couple. If there's a crowd of non-believers, there's probably a couple of the you know believers. But so I was able to present the gospel right before I rap. Then when I rap, they was all feeling it. They was clapping and stuff like that. And I was like, wow. I didn't think they were actually going to enjoy the message that I brought to them that day. There were people recording me and taking pictures. I was like, wow. I was not expecting that. Yeah. And so I walked in there not even expecting to talk about that topic. I walked in there expecting to talk hip hop, and I left out of there talking about Jesus hop. <laughs> now nah, I'm just <laughs> G hop. <laughs> I, yeah, and, and and so it was great because even though I was nervous, even though I felt like I was unprepared, God had prepared me beforehand. Mm, honey, oh, run that back. <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, I felt unprepared before I started rapping, and I realized afterwards God was preparing me all along. Um, yep. If if if. My message that I brought to the church at that that evening, mm -hmm. if it wasn't embraced there, I knew that it was at least embraced before I even got to the performance to the performance when I was in that hip hop lecture. Shout out my mama. My right. mama. So my encouragement to you guys is um, whatever God has put on your heart, whatever he's gifted you with, whatever talent you have, and you know you should be glorifying God with it, don't try to hide it. Um, don't try to be on the low with it if you're yeah, given a chance. If you, you know, th there too. will, there will be opportunities. There will be opportunities for you to be able to share God's love. And, um, we have to be ready for that. Jesus said, be ready at all times. And he was talking about his return, but I think we should be ready at all times to present the gospel to others. So that, that's yeah. my, that's my challenge to you guys. Um, and it's a challenge to myself. Cause I gotta stay ready too. I can't just talk about it. 
But you know what they say, if you stay ready, you ain't gotta, gotta get, get ready. ready. You ain't gotta get ready. <laughs> Amen. All ready. Amen. <laughs> so we're not gonna um we're not gonna take up too much time. And today's kind of like a recap. If you've been following the series, if you've missed anything, trust me, I know I was talking to my wife and when you see things about like the resurrection and stuff like that, if you only reserve up, China. If you only reserve that for Easter, it's kind of like a boring thing. Like, right. If there was two books on the table, the resurrection and then, like blessings, so. we probably picked the blessings book. Mm -hmm. But we didn't just highlight the resurrection. We highlight the relevancy of Jesus. Is right. Jesus, right. does he speak to the issues at hand? Right. We know God is a universal and everybody's cool with God. But then there's that Jesus thing that causes division. And ironically, Jesus said it would. <laughs> so. Yeah. Which, which validates that he wasn't lying to us when he said he's going to cause some division because everybody's not feeling him. So we went from talking about how the Bible sets up witnesses. Um, you have a book with 44 different authors. Right. That's that, well, the, well, the Bible was man-made. Well, if you go to court and you have 44 people saying, nah, he didn't do it, that's just a better look. And then we talked about how Jesus had a pull-up ministry where if he was constructed and he was just for the benefit of the white man, why would he care about the least of these why would he care about the ostracized? Right. Why would he care about the disenfranchised? Mm. Why would he say, when you when you reach out to people in prison, which is systemic, you're doing it for me. When you reach out to people who are hungry and poverty, which is systemic, you're doing it for me. When you're reaching out to the people who are sick or the widows who don't have a family, which is sometimes systemic, mm -hmm. you're doing it for me. Why would he care about anyone less than himself if, 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 he, if he's a concocted tool to keep people oppressed? So mm. right. we spoke how that kind of falls apart. And then we spoke on how um, resurrection is, is not just coming back from the dead because the Bible has examples of people being raised from the dead. Whether it was uh, yeah. the dudes that, that uh, Elijah healed, whether it was the, the, the children that Jesus healed, right. the famous Lazarus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We even chopped up a little bit about maybe even Jonah resurrected inside of the, the, the belly of the whale. The possibility. Yeah. So yeah. they were resuscitated, meaning they were dead, they came back to life. Jesus resurrected, meaning when he went in the grave, he came out with a brand new body. Mm -hmm. Nobody did that before but him, so, so he was the first. And that was an example of the hope that we have. Mm -hmm. um, when our lives, he said, I'm the resurrection and the life. Mm -hmm. Meaning, I'm the life for you now, and then I'm the life for you then. And we talk about how the world, what the world has in common, other than cell phones, <laughs> is that uh, we have in common something greater and higher than ourselves. Mm -hmm. And when you investigate what on the planet is real with the issues in the world, the Bible does not shy away from saying, this is the conditions of the world. Mm -hmm. The world is wicked. Man is wicked. And there's, there's a solution to that. So, yeah. That's kind of that's kind of what the series has been about. Mm. Heather, set some highlights. Uh, oh, mean? it looked like you in the comment. Oh no, 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 no. I'm, I'm no, just... the, then the ladies just added their gift to just singing and, and um, because it's 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 um, we don't just want to talk about facts and, and, and what's up, Jesse. Mm -hmm. That goes nowhere. Well, this book says this, and the ancient that, and then the ancient writings about that. We can do that all day. When you take yeah. the time to spend time in the presence of the living God, who can deny? being in the presence of the living God. We can talk scriptures and, and compare verses and uh, timelines all day, but have you spent time in the presence of the living God? Do you walk with Jesus? Mm. Do you know him? Do you know his voice? Mm. Like, so when we're saying he's real, it's not because we have to subscribe to what our pastor says. It's like, nah, mm. when I pray or when I'm convicted or, or when I'm directed or when my thoughts are interrupted or when I'm prompted, is real. And so we concluded our, our uh, sessions with music that just highlights that and creates an environment mm -hmm. to just dwell and think about God. Right. If he's real, that means y'all can have access to him yourselves. Mm. So that's all I got. Well, I'm Actually, I think Tiff, Tiff has something that she was going to share. Um, I have it on my phone, actually. Cause she sent it to me so she could share it. Um, you find out Tiff's about to spit some bars. <laughs> <laughs> Tiff, Tiff. Whatever. Yeah, go ahead, Tiff. Um, I just wanted to touch on why Jesus is real because we can talk about, we can talk mm. about all day why he's real for us and what mm. he has done for us. Right. But regardless of who we are, he's, he's going to be who he is. Right. What, regardless of what he may have done for us, you know, maybe somebody, maybe that's not enough. For somebody who is fatherless, for somebody who, um, you know, is lonely or, or, or whatever their past may be, like, 
Jesus is relevant because he can can change those situations for you. Right. Right. If you're fatherless, he can be he can be a father to you. Or if you're a single father or mother, he can teach you how to be a parent to these children, whether you're a single father or mother or not. Mm -hmm. Jesus is relevant today. He was relevant 2,000 years ago. It wasn't, he wasn't just relevant to those people 2,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. A lot of people wonder where they're going to go um, when they die. Jesus is relevant. He will, you can, if you read the, his word, you'll know. Mm -hmm. You'll know yeah. where you're going to go where you're when you're die. This is not where we stay. It's not just we're going to be buried in the grave and that's it. Yeah. He's, he's relevant right. regardless of what he... He's relevant to me because I have a relationship with him. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, like I said, that's not enough. So right. you want to know why he's relevant? Read, yeah. his, read his word. Believe it. What's up, Jonathan? Right. Let me just chime in real quick. For, for someone out there, especially being at the, the, the boys' detention center, um, a lot of them, there was a, a, a lyric that I said, how many of us here grew up fatherless? You should have saw the hands, right? Man, they all, I, I, know, all I remember so that, yeah. I, I could say Jesus can be your father. Like, that's a good philosophy. Mm -hmm. But is that a reality when at the end of the day, there's nobody tossing me to football? Like, mm -hmm. Jesus is not going to toss you to football. What are you guys what are you right. talking about? Right, yeah. how are you going to say so, Jesus is going to be a father if you right, can't even we, touch him? We, we right. can't even we, physically we say that. But here's an example of how that happens. Mm. Just like Jesus said, hey, Break it down, brother. If, if, you go to the, if you go to the prison, you're doing that on my behalf. God uses people in his place. So my father, my biological father and, and the dad that raised me and introduced my family to the Lord, he passed away. So I don't care who you are, how tough you are, what gang you're from. When you don't have your father, it has side effects. Period. So yep. I'm a father with two boys at the time. So I'm like, man, I don't have a reference. Like, am I doing this the right way? Am I spending enough time? I can only use the tools sorry, that I have for my son that I felt limited. So that was a pain. No matter how much I had it together, that was a pain that God understood. I don't have a father or a father figure. What's up, Trees? A man, a man by the name of uh, Chuck Hall didn't know me from a can of paint. We visited his church at random. Mm -hmm. And he walks up after the service and said, God put it on my heart for me to invest in you. How, about, how would you like to go out for a cup of coffee? Never met, met this guy yep. in my life. It was, a, it, was a, it was a private prayer that God answered publicly. Mm -hmm. And he modeled himself as a father figure. So you mean First God, time, God actually speaks to people? God uses people. How, does, how is Jesus going to be my father? He, 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 he prompted a man that didn't know me. Mm -hmm. He's, he was he a, still does that? He still does that. <laughs> mm -hmm. <In> <laughs> he still does that. Really? Like he really? Didn't, he he's a, he was a, he was an older Caucasian male, and I'm I only saying God that. just watched us from above. <laughs> mm. He's just yeah, he just watches and and we do whatever we want, right? Mm. Nah, he he's concerned about those things. In the mm. church filled with people not like us, we were, we were countercultural. Mm. He had so I'm pretty I don't know how long he was wrestling with. Is this really God? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. I don't know this guy. I right. might bring him to my house and he might take something from me. Right. Mm. I don't know, but he had enough faith to hear from this same God to be like. Can I can I can I invest in you? Mm. Yeah. And it I, I didn't it didn't feel offensive. It right. felt like yo, and it took a couple of weeks for me to be like, you know what? I was just praying for some type of father figure. Mm. <laughs> he didn't look at me like you're all busted up and and you needed help and nope. But I went fishing for the first time. Never did that. Took my boys fishing, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Um, just little life tools and life lessons, mm. and chopped it up over the words. So what we had in common was the fact that we prayed to the same Jesus. And that's just an example of how can Jesus be a father to the father? He'll send. What's a up, father. Amanda? So, shout out Edward Bye. and Sabrina. Thanks for breaking for that down. So, yeah. that's so, so, so Jesus is relevant. Oh, well. Jesus Great. is relevant because. because ask that. Hmm? Well, I told, I thanked him for breaking that down because people would want to know. Okay, right. right? How can like? Now, yeah. when you start talking crazy, like Jesus is my boyfriend, he's my husband. That that's different. That's he, so different. He don't want to be your boyfriend. He doesn't that. need to be your husband. Yeah. He wants to be your savior. So that. what he does is he meets your needs. Right. He's not mm -hmm. just. It's not just about. I got to go to church and read the Bible a thousand hours and and and, and find out what my love languages is. Is it's, he he meets us where we are, and that's how he does it. He's he's a tangible God. He uses people who probably don't feel this, like they deserve to be used. That's how we all felt at the Miles House. Mm -hmm. So Jesus is relevant because. 
instead of being that God at the top of the mountain that you have to go to, right. he sees you at the bottom, realizes that you cannot get to him. Right. Mm -hmm. Realizes that you're not able to get to him by yourself right. and comes to you. Right. He's a relational God. Jesus is relevant today because he meets you where you are. Now, does he stay? Does he encourage you to stay where you are? No, Jesus comes to you, grabs your hand, or if you're so weak, he will pick you up right. mm -hmm. and take you to where you need to be. Right. How are you going to have uh, some matted hair and hang around the barbershop for years and not end up with some type of shape up or something? <laughs> right. You can't hang around God right. and then him not impact you to some way, shape, if, or form. If you're sick, you can't hang around a doctor and not feel some type of healing. Not get some type of medication. Not get some type of relief. Mm. That's what the doctor is there for. What's up, Holly? A prescription, a cough oh. drop, or something. You know what I mean? Something, Shout man. Holly Even a sugar pill. Word. No, I'm just right. saying. He has on. He's on. Oh, what, what up, Ed? Yeah, I shouted him out earlier. What up, Holly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What's, What's up, Ed? Rich people don't have. Not, I don't think you're friends rich with Rich people Ed. don't have poor <laughs> friends. Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Rich people don't. But have I'm friends with Ed. Rich people don't have poor friends. You're not cool. What would that look like? Why would you not? Right. Right. Help your friend. Right. Step up and knock. Right, right. So I, I think Heather, we're at the point where I'm, I'm going to ask you one more time. Oh, okay. <laughs> Throughout this whole series, that's all we've been talking about. That's Why is Jesus relevant? Is Why? there anything that you would like to add? Yeah. Um, I think of like relevant in the sense of like even today's music, like fads and trends change. Like they're relevant for a time. But then something else becomes relevant. And the reason it's relevant is because people, they like it. It fits their lifestyle. It works for them. And I, I, I would plug Jesus into that same thing. He, it, it, Having a relationship with Jesus, not that he works for me, but it works for my life. Mm -hmm. It makes sense in my life. Right. It's real to my life. Even on my worst day, and, and I've had plenty change. of those, it doesn't, it, it's not a fad or trend that goes out of style. Right. Never, ever goes out of style. Like, these earrings will probably wear out of style in, like, two or three years. Well, last but, week, we looked at you know stuff that went out of style. Right. It, it, it happens. It happens. But he, the fact that he doesn't change makes him relevant every single day. Every year, year after year. It just, that's, for me, he don't change. So, he, he continually changes me. Something that doesn't change changes uh, people. So, I mean, how how much more relevant can you get, can you get than that? But, um. Yeah. I, I th that's my testimony. I mean, yeah. I, I think ultimately, because now we're at the point where I think we've not exhausted it, but we've definitely gone deep. <laughs> gone tired. deep. We've gone yeah, deep into we... this. Why is Jesus relevant <coughs> oh, in 2017? I think ultimately it ends up being this one thing right here is that only you can answer that for yourself. Right. Only you can answer this question that we asked you from the beginning. Why is Jesus relevant in 2017? Well, only you can act, answer that because mm -hmm. only you can speak for yourself. Mm -hmm. right. I can't speak for Gordon because what if he's lying to me? Exactly. See what I'm saying? I can't speak for Heather because what if there's something going on in her life I don't know about? Mm -hmm. I can't speak for none of that. Yep. I can only speak for myself. So it comes back to why is Jesus relevant to you? Why is he relevant? If he's not relevant, then he's not relevant to you. And that's the truth of the matter. You have to ask yourself, why is Jesus relevant to you in 2017? Why does he matter? Or is he just irrelevant? Mm -hmm. Does he not matter? And there are people that would say that. And there would, and exactly. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of people. <laughs> plenty saying, of people yeah. well, that would disagree with us on many right. points. But I, I can only speak forever. for myself. And yeah. I can tell you that Jesus is definitely relevant to everything that I go through. So, was there more that you wanted to share, G? No, oh, we're going to swing it. Okay. Your way. You're good? Uh, yeah, yeah, we're going to transition. You guys are good? Yeah. Okay. So, I want to share I want to share a little bit of word with you guys. And then we'll get into the music. Mm -hmm. uh, we did promise y'all we weren't going to be real long today. It's it's short, <laughs> short, sweet, and simple. Yeah, no, no, um, no. There, uh, If you guys are in front of your Bibles right now, if you're able to do this, go to Acts chapter 17. We're going to be in the book of Acts chapter 17. Um, I'm going to be dealing mostly with just uh, the verses 16 through, I don't know, 28 or something like that. I'll be starting at verse 16. Um, what I want to do is I want to I want to talk about why 
why we know for sure that Christianity is not a copycat religion and why the men back in Jesus' knew that Christianity was not a copycat religion. Hold on. Shout out Sultan. <laughs> what? Salt. Salt. Oh, Salt's on there. What's what up, bro? Salt? I wasn't getting any. So comments. check this out. I'm in Acts 17, and I shared this with you guys a couple weeks ago, and I because I, it's just something that just really stands out in the scripture. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Paul was going to Athens. Why? Because he had to leave where he was at mm -hmm. because it got too hot. Pretty much, they were preaching the gospel. Mm -hmm. Paul was getting to the point where they were trying to kill him, and his partners, his ministry partners, told him. Please leave. Go somewhere else because it's getting too hot right now. So he was waiting in Athens. He he went to Athens and he's waiting for, and you guys can help me with this. Is it Silas and Timothy? Yeah. yeah. I'm looking at it right now. He's waiting for Silas and Timothy. Acts chapter 17. Now I'm at verse 16. Um, now, while Paul was waiting for them in Athens, his spirit was provoked within him as he saw that the city was full of idols. So he goes into Athens, and this place is very religious. He notices right off the bat, this, this place is very religious. I think we live in a time where everybody is religious in some way. You start to see the connection here. So he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and the devout persons and in the marketplace every day with those who happened to be there. Some of the Epicureans and the Stoic philosophers also conversed with him. So he's dealing with some people that knew about philosophy. These men were educated in learning ways of life, how to live it, the wisdom, and all of these things like that. They like to sit around. Like it says right here, and they like to speak about a whole bunch of deep stuff. They love to talk about wisdom and philosophy and ways of living. They love to talk about this stuff. Yeah, yeah. And so he pops up in the middle of there because he sees them all worshiping false gods. Mm -hmm. And he's, he's provoked in his spirit like, nah, nah, I got to give him this truth. He goes up in there and says, um, I'm at verse 18 still. And some said, what? And he went to go talk with them. And then some people that were listening said, what does this babbler wish to say? So they already thought low of him. What did this babbler? Why? It says because he seems to be a preacher of foreign divinities. Because he was preaching Jesus and the resurrection. He was preaching Jesus and the resurrection and it was not familiar to them. I'll say that again. Yes. He was preaching Jesus and the resurrection, and it was not familiar to them. What does that mean? That means that there's no way that this Jesus story could have been a copycat religion. People today still say that the Jesus Christ, the gospel of the Jesus, gospel of Jesus Christ and the resurrection was a copy of all the religions that were already already happening then. They say, oh, there was a Jesus Christ that came 30 years before Jesus Christ supposedly walked up. No. Yeah. So you mean all the horse and exactly oh, the uh, the Mithraism, right, right, all that, all that that they that these memes, this meme theology, which I will be getting into next week, <laughs> this meme theology and all that, they talk about all this stuff like Jesus is a copycat. No, no, this is our proof right here. They said he was preaching foreign divinities. This was something that they weren't familiar with. If it was a copycat religion, they would have said, "Nope, you took that from Horus." Nope, you took that from um, you took that from Osiris. Nope, yeah. you follow you you you're copying from the religion of Mithraism. You you you're just copying. So Nothing you're saying is an, is original to us. They would have said that if Jesus if the story of Jesus and the resurrection was false. And that's deep. Mm. What real quick what he's saying is some of the objections we get that Jesus isn't real and a lot of it's coming from even our own African American community because they're saying that the Greek Jesus is a, is a made-up god or a copycat of Osiris or Horus. Well, when Paul encounters Greek theologians and Greek scholars, they never heard of Jesus before. So how can the Jesus we serve be a copycat of that stuff when these guys who worship those idols never heard of Jesus? That would mean they would have to be copying us. That's what he's saying, just, just for those who might... And on top of that, they thought, they thought low of this faith. They called him a babbler. Which means he was just talking nonsense to them. Mm. What he was saying to them sounded stupid and foolish, which is exactly what the Gospels, what the bi books of the Bible say. Right. That's exactly what the Bible promises that people will say about the Gospel. That is foolishness to them. Mm. 
Check this out, though. I'm in verse 19. And, and they, the ones who were, who were pretty much rejecting what he was saying, and they took hold of him and brought him to the Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new teaching is that you are presenting. New May we new know this teaching. new teaching. This was new to them, y'all. This new. was not a copycat religion. Wow. For you bring some strange things to our ears. Mm. Again, it's strange to them. This is something that they haven't heard of. This is unheard of. This is crazy. Why would you believe in this? Mm. Unless it was true. Unless it was new. Mm. For you bring some strange things to our ears. We wish to know, therefore, what these things mean. They not only hadn't heard of it, they didn't even know what it meant. They didn't know how to comprehend it. They didn't know what to do with this new teaching. What's up, Kev? Wow. So... <laughs> Like so, yeah. so, so, so they didn't know what to think of this teaching. Mind you, the, these, these are the same, this is the same time period that people today say that we copied our religion from. This is the same time period that they say you got your Jesus story from people that were living during this time. If Jesus and the resurrection was a copycat story, these men who were very knowledgeable in all types of philosophies, all types of beliefs, that's all they did was sit around and talk about beliefs all day long. If Jesus was in any way a copycat of, that, uh, of another religion, they would have called it out right then and there. Right. Mm. They wouldn't have been saying these are strange things. They wouldn't have called him a babbler for talking foolishness to them. They would have just said, he's a liar, he's a fraud, for talking all of this copycat religion. But he wasn't. It was something new to them. And then not only did they not ever hear of it. But on top of that. They didn't even know what it meant. They were looking for meaning behind it. Now all the Athenians. Athenians. I don't know. And the foreigners who lived there. Would spend their time in nothing. Except telling or hearing something new. See this is what they would do in their free time. People today play NBA 2K in their free time. Other people get on Facebook and social media in their free time. You know what these guys did in their free time? They sat around and talked about beliefs all day. They were like the Star Wars guys. They were like Star Wars guys who just sit around and talk theories, right? They were like the, the guys on ESPN that talk sports all day, right? These guys love to talk religion all day. If Jesus was something that was a copycat religion, these men would have been able to spot it like that. They would have been able to catch it just like that as soon as he started talking. But they said it was new. They said it was strange to them. They said it was a foreign God. So Paul, standing in the midst of the Areopagus, said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in every way you are very religious. Mm. Paul knew that they knew, knew um, about religion very well. For as I passed along and observed the objects of your worship, I found also an altar with this inscription. To the unknown God. So they not only worshipped all these guys they believed in, right? Not all the guys that, not just the guys that they believed in, but they even had a little place for a God that they might not even know about. That's how religious they were. That's like you having a Bible, you having the Quran, you having the, um, the Jewish Talmud, and then right next to it, you putting a little blank space. This is for this is this is some space for that God that I might not know about. Yeah. Like you're that superstitious and religious that you even hold it space there for something that you might not even know about. That's how these men were. Mm. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. So Paul's saying, you knew all along mm. that there was a God out there that you didn't know about. And I'm about to tell you about him. I hear you, Kevin. <laughs> I, and you know what? Hey. At least you're honest about it. That's that's all we can do is be honest, right? That's all any of us can do is be honest about it, where we're at. So he says, what therefore you worship is unknown. This I proclaim to you. I'm about to give you um, the truth to something that you, you felt this whole time. You just didn't know about it. Wow. The God who made the world and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by man, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mankind life and breath and everything. What he's saying is, you guys worship these gods in temples, man-made temples. Guess what? My God is realer than your God. My God is truer than your God. My God is more powerful than your God. My God doesn't 
You don't have to come to him in a, in a building to worship him. I'm going to say that again because we have a lot of people that believe you have to be in the church to go on to God. You don't have to go to a building to worship God. And I'll just say it one more time. You don't have to go to a building to have church service. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I'm just speaking facts. And he made, who, God, made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having determined allotted periods in the boundaries of their dwelling place, that they should seek God in hope that they might feel their way toward him and find him. I think what he's saying to them at this point is, you guys have been feeling your way toward him. Why? What do you do when you're blind? You feel your way around. They're going to feel their way toward God and find him, those, those that are in this, at this point. Yet he is actually not far from each one of us. We're blind. We can't see him before we meet Christ, but we're feeling for him. We know he's somewhere. It's like when you're searching in the dark looking for that light switch, you know it's somewhere around here. And I'm pretty soon I'm going to hit that switch. Got it. This is the one true God. In him we live and move and have our being. As even some of our own, um, some of your own poets have said, for we are indeed his offspring. So what he's saying is even the ones who don't even believe in Jesus know that he's real. Mm. We know. <clears throat> we, we can feel that. Everybody knows. That's why Jesus is still relevant today. Mm. Otherwise, Christianity would have been died out. Is that why... I think sometimes the contradiction in the debates is this, um, especially the debate between knowledge and then belief. And it's like, you guys believe something, but that's not knowledge. But the people who don't believe in Jesus don't believe <laughs> right. in right. Jesus. They don't, knowledge Jesus is not there. They don't believe. So you're right. using your belief right. and your faith mm -hmm. and applying it to the negative. Mm -hmm. It's the same belief. Mm -hmm. You're just not applying it. So everybody has to deal with that belief, that innate feeling like right. there's something out there. Mm. Mm. That's true. And being then God's offspring, I'm at verse 29, being then God's offspring, being that we're created in his being, being that we are all man and we are created by the creator, we ought not to think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of man. This God that I'm talking to you guys about is not like the other gods that you guys know about. He's not imagined in our brain. He's not some God that we formed um, with silver, gold, clay, anything like that. The times of ignorance God overlooked. But now he commands all people everywhere to repent. There was a time at which God had mercy on the world. Because they had not known about Christ. Right? Christ is the image of God. Right, right. But once you reject the image of God, you have no excuse anymore. Because mm. before Jesus came down to earth, you could say, well, God's never shown himself to me. Mm. But when Jesus came down, we have no excuse anymore to say we haven't even seen God. Yes, you have. Yeah. You've heard of God. And you either accept or you reject this God. God has overlooked the times of ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. All people everywhere. All people everywhere. You mean not, not, just, just, not just the white man? <laughs> not just the white man, not just the black man, not just the yellow man. <clears throat> he commands all people everywhere. That means that nobody... Nobody is greater than someone else that they don't have to repent. Everyone has to repent because we've all fallen short of God's glory. Because he has fixed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. So we know that we need to come to repentance because we will be judged by Jesus. Mm. The sign that we have that Jesus is the one that we're supposed to repent for or repent in is the resurrection. This whole time we've been talking about the resurrection and why it's so important. 
the reason why the resurrection is so important is because God was sending a message. Right. Everybody else who died, they stayed dead. Mm -hmm. They're dead. Mm -hmm. But guess what? Jesus rose from the dead. Mm -hmm. He was sending a message. This man that just died is not like the rest of y'all. Everyone, everywhere else has to repent, but not Jesus. He's different. And that was the sign that God was sending to the rest of the world. And we no longer have um, that excuse. The times of ignorance are over. Ever since Jesus rose from the dead, it's been game time. Like, there's no, there's no denying God's existence anymore because of this. Now, when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked. But others said, we will hear you again about this. So they were intrigued, some of them. But there were a bunch of other ones that laughed at them. Isn't that how it is today? Oh, yeah. You have people who laugh and then people who want to hear about it some more. So Paul went out from their midst, but some men joined him and believed. They became believers, some of them. Among whom also were Dionysius, the Areopagite, and a woman named Damaris and others with them. Now, pause. <coughs> yeah. First of all, shout out John, Karen, and Jason. Um, but Kevin Garay had a question. He asked, "Did we ask a question?" Yeah, it's the same. Because he had to leave the live to. Oh. He okay. came back. Um, yeah, it was the same question that we asked before. Uh, why is Jesus or not relevant? Jesus is relevant. Why or why not? That that's Jesus? been the question all month. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's been yeah, the question that's all the month. Question. Why is Jesus relevant today, and or why is he not relevant right. to you? Um. We've been asking that question all month. So, there's just a couple things I want to bring up before we get done with this right here. Paul knew that people were very religious in Athens, but they were religious in the wrong ways. They were religious for the wrong gods. He tried to preach to them the one true God. So, he came to their level and explained it in a way that they would understand. So, they started to understand and many of them mocked him. But then others were intrigued and they believed. And they followed him after that. Mm -hmm. There was a tugging at their heart that they knew was just real. Mm -hmm. I think we've been to this point before. All believers have been to that point where we just knew what we knew and we just knew what we knew. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Shout out EC. Mm -hmm. What's up? What's up? What's up? Um... The resurrection was new to them. So even though that they were religious, the resurrection was actually new to them. They called him a babbler. They said it was strange and it was a new teaching that he brought to them. Why? Because even though they believed in the afterlife, they didn't believe in the resurrection of the body. They didn't believe in the physical, literal, bodily resurrection. They didn't believe in that type of resurrection. There were some that believed that when you die, your body goes back and becomes pretty much the dirt that it came from mm -hmm. and that your spirit releases and goes back to the God that it came from. That's where you get that, that belief that we all have a spark of divinity in us. That was the Epicureans, right? Then you have, um, um, then you have the Stoics who believe that your body returned to the original elements that they came from um, oh, I said that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, they believe that immortality comes from getting rid of the body because the body is a prison or a restraint from the spirit inside. So they believe that the spirit is being held prisoner by the body. And when you die, your spirit is now free. So why would they ever want to come back into the body that held them prisoner? Mm. They didn't believe in this resurrection. They rejected it because it sounded foolish to them. If my spirit, who I truly am, is being held down by this horrible, deathly body, why would I want to come back to a body that has already rotted in the ground? Right. Wow. So resurrection, at least the resurrection that we're talking about, that's physical, literal, and a bodily resurrection, it was unimaginable to them. It didn't even make sense to them. So no wonder why they rejected this teaching of Jesus and the resurrection that he brought. No wonder why they called him a babbler. No wonder why they laughed at him and mocked him. Mm. See, dualism was strong back then. You, they have a belief that the body was evil 
and that the body needed to die and that the spirit was good and that the spirit needs to live forever. We don't believe that. <clears throat> Otherwise, God wouldn't give us a physical body whenever we die. When we die and we're resurrected again, he wouldn't give us a physical body afterwards. He renews what we once had and gives us something that is even greater. God embraces that middle, that middle area between physical and spiritual. Like Kevin said, that's deep. Shout out Albert for tuning in. So they definitely didn't believe in the resurrection. Cheryl and Hokey for tuning in. And they believed in the afterlife, but not the resurrection. Okay? Right. So some left. Some were intrigued and believed. But ultimately, how you perceive Jesus in the resurrection, it rests on your faith. You have to ask yourself, which one are you? Are you part of the people that mock and laugh at Jesus in the resurrection? Or are you part of the group that actually listens to the gospel and embraces it and believes in it? There was a man named Celsus. He was a, um, a, an enemy of Christianity. He said, what kind of person would want to come back in a body that rotted in the ground? That's pretty much the belief of those people back then. They laughed at the idea of the resurrection. Today, people laugh at the idea of resurrection for different reasons. But you have to ask yourself, why would you reject it or why would you accept this teaching? Are you a true believer in Christ? Do you, do you subscribe to the Christian faith? Because if you do, then you have to believe in the resurrection. Jesus Christ living and Jesus Christ rising are hand in hand with one another. You can't say that you believe in Jesus Christ if you don't believe in the resurrection. Mm. The resurrection and the gospel are part of one another. Mm. You can't accept one, deny the other. You can't say, yeah, I believe Jesus is God, but I don't believe the part about him rising from the dead. Like Maybe he came back spiritually. No. The Bible says that he had a physical, literal, bodily resurrection. So you have to ask yourself, are you part of the group that mocks this belief? Or are you part of the group that believes in it? Mm -hmm. Ultimately, it comes back to your faith. <clears throat> so that's Woo! Acts chapter 17, <laughs> packed in a really wow. tight nutshell. Uh, uh, Sheesh! Whoa. <coughs> um, uh, um, wow. Yeah, if, if there's any questions right now, the best time will be to ask right now. Right, Albert. Without he said, without obedience, you were just religious. Right. No, I like that. Right. I like that. Yeah. What do you mean? I'm gonna share this now. So. Oh. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. Okay. Yep. So we are getting ready yeah. to conclude the conclusion. Absolutely. <laughs> if right you guys now. are watching, stay tuned. We're we're getting into the music part of it right now. Right. We always share some uh, share a song at the end. So you guys. So if you guys are watching right now, go ahead and hit that share button. Comment in the comment section. Tell us why Jesus Christ is relevant to you today in 2017. Resurrection. I've never taught about it in school. Mm. Man, there's a there was a lot of great. What yeah. Wayne shared is so. It's so important to build in your faith. If you are a believer and you know Jesus' resurrection on Easter, but you have no idea of the Epicureans and the Stoics and your own church history and why you believe in Jesus and the opposition against him, that's why we do what we do. It's mm. it's way more than just, he woke me up, started me on my way this morning. I'm, uh, I'm not where I want to be. Praise God, I'm not where I used to be. Um, blessed, highly faith. What God it's, has for me it's is for me. It's, it's more than that. You know, yeah. and we get ridiculed from other communities because we don't know our word. Mm -hmm. We don't know our Bible. Uh, we, we, we look silly out here. We look foolish. Mm -hmm. God said, let the foolishness be in, in presenting the gospel, not in our lack of education. So we think it's mandatory to equip the body with more than just usually what we're used to used to getting so that was deep bro thanks for sharing that um oh. Kevin, you well, Kevin, Kevin's, yeah Kevin you didn't hear about it in school or college he said he's not sure what resurrection is the, he's never the, been taught it the resurrection um man there's a lot that they, they didn't teach they ain't gonna you. teach yeah. you in public should, school yeah, yeah. Should there, there are events in the bible um where people have died and Jesus rose them from the dead that's a resuscitation we see that now when someone's 
proclaimed clinically dead, but they're brought back to life. Mm -hmm. A resurrection is when you die, but when you come back to life, you don't even have the same body that you died in. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's a it's a it's a new body, mm -hmm. and like Wayne said, God meets you in the middle with your physical, and your and your spiritual, and gives you a body that's equipped to live with God. Um, yeah, that's that's in, in, in short. But we can chop it up about that some more. But thanks for even taking your time to want to Seriously, listen. yeah, you guys are. Yeah. You, you always Some provide good. I appreciate that, Kev, your input. <clears throat> I really do. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm going to summarize everything we've been talking about in, in one of the ways that I know how, and, and that's just... Mandy thing. says she's part of that group that believes. Yeah, Amen. I saw that. That's what's up. Amen. God. Amen. Right? Because you can believe in Jesus and not know why. You know what I'm saying? Um, unfortunately, that's the nature of religion. It's just handed down information, and then you live out what you saw your parents do and then based on what they know that's all you know and it never goes any deeper so you never grow any higher so we want right. to say nah let's let's get it in mm -hmm. um if y'all if you guys seen the the freestyle that eminem did it wasn't really a freestyle freestyles are freestyles anymore but, uh, no he kind of went on his political rant and it was cool and all so i wanted to summarize this whole series okay in that kind of fashion so i'm gonna throw my hoodie on <laughs> Y'all make sure y'all give me some elbow room because, you know, rap you got it. Up, oh, you know, man. You know okay, like okay. That. Oh, Give it to him. Go ahead. Yo, we're going to need y'all to keep it down in the back. Okay. We're winding up. We're coming on the end of this. Y'all doing great. Just keep it down for a couple more minutes. Let, we me, draw, let, me, let me draw the strings a little tighter. <laughs> get them. Um, About to get real. This is called the summary. Let me summarize. Some of us will rise up and tell us that the Son of God was a sum of lies. Mm. But what if someone lied? Then the sum of a life as I know it is over as if someone died. We're talking relevance. So if the elephant in the room is we bought the lie of Jesus, then who's selling it? Mm. Not the white man, because African believers predated. The Europeans abused it, but they didn't create it. Mm. So put that timeline or your timeline if you ain't sure. Remember, it's easier to abuse something that ain't yours. Mm. There's a difference between Jesus the Jewish carpenter and Jesus the dude in art pictures. <laughs> but maybe you got a science kit. You're not a scholar because you're posting memes out of it. You're a bad banker because you can't see the counterfeit. Mm. So you want to look for evidence. If someone lies about the evidence, then it's evident. Now you got to have faith in the scientist. In other words, you got to have faith in their biases. So they take the same leap of faith and close their minds with the same piece of tape. Mm -hmm. So Christians get ostracized because Darwin saw an ostrich-sized bird and figured evolution made those ostrich eyes. Mm. They believe in a universal insufficient incident and left instances of intentions and now insist it's infinite. Mm. All that to say our starting point's the same in uncaused cause cause all this change. Mm. What? So giving kudos to God is not garbage. Now thinking the earth is flat like a frisbee dog. Now that's far-fetched. So we all believe in something that we haven't seen. We really all want to know what's happening behind the scenes. From capitalists to Colin Kaepernick to the national anthem to cops shooting handguns at brothers at random. The president and the negligence are working in tandem. The systematic system's at it again. The upper class ain't up for grabs. They don't let everyone in. Mm -hmm. We got issues with taxes and health care, issues with poverty, issues with welfare, hurricanes, earthquakes, regulated birth rates, hate groups fighting what color was the first race. Mm. Oh. Mm. So mm. since these are the issues, who speaks about them? Since man can't acquire an answer, who will preach about them? Ooh. Jesus does, and Jesus did, and Jesus loves, and Jesus gives, because he is just, and he forgives, and he's with us, because Jesus lives. Woo! <laughs> God bless you and your family. Snap your finger. Oh. <laughs> he just dropped the mic and walked away. <laughs> How do you even respond to that? How do you respond? How you go after I'm just going to let that sing in for... Sing after that. Like, we got a song for y'all. We got a song for y'all. I mean... Something to cool y'all off after y'all get those fire bars. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, uh, so Daryl wants to answer this, this question. With Wait. The... Oh, maybe he said, yeah, Christ is alive whether we believe it or not. Um, Daryl, we did see the question. We actually weren't able to get to it in that moment, but yeah, he said, he, he asked, the, was Christ alive or do we just believe he is? I think that's what the question was. 
He said, Christ is alive whether we believe it or not. That's right. Mm. That's absolutely right. Um, sorry we didn't get to answer that question on the spot, but yeah. We, yeah, go ahead, Kev. You can respond. We, Just comment in the section. We'll have, get to you. That was Daryl. We definitely have... Yeah, Kevin asked if you Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, ahead, absolutely. Kev. Yeah, yeah. We wish you would. Um, so, we're going to get this song. We got a, another remix for y'all. If you've been watching our page. All right, move over. So I can We've been doing these little over. remixes, little life music remixes, okay? Trying to get G up in there, too. Trying to get G up in there, too. So... He's on percussion, so. Right. Yeah, but y'all, I you give me some elbow. <laughs> Tip, watch your foot. There you go. Even if we can get a sliver of G, just a little bit. Let's just switch. Okay. No, we sliver don't have him at all. Jigger. So you want to turn? I can see his arm. Oh wait, wait. I'm gonna hop in. Yeah, he's gonna be closer. Yeah. So I can get everybody. Yeah. So how do you end that kind of broadcast? If you guys are watching this, go ahead and hit that share button. Going to come to y'all again with another song that we made up kind of on the spot. Yeah. It's, a well, rem it's another remix. Another remix. For another remix for y'all. Remix, 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 remix. remix, 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 remix. <laughs> I'm waiting for short. G reason. Oh, we can't go without that beat. We need the beat. Y'all hear that? Not the snare. I mean, you want to hit it nice All right. Yeah. Hold on. Let it, let it, go ahead. Watch the beat, Bill. Uh, All right, yeah, yeah, we gotta make sure we can Watch hear it. Watch the beat, Bill. Here we go. Yeah. Watch Here the beat. I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am.
thank you. Once thank again, you, and the you, 17 people we have right now. Right. Y'all just missed a banging, banging broadcast. Please go check the replay. We right. love y'all. Right. We right. thank you for right. tuning in right. every single week. Um, we'll yep. be back again next yep. Tuesday. Look at this. 20 viewers. Y'all pop up. Yeah, what's we'll up? Be, we'll be back no, I'm still here. Minute. We'll be back next Tuesday. I'm still here. here. Y'all know I do my thing no, at the no, no, end. No. We're still here, but I mean. No, I'm still here. I'm still here. We'll, What's we up? We will be live again Tuesday, next Tuesday at 7 p.m. Yes. Yes. Eastern Standard Time yes. with another message, Life Talk, and yes. since, um, since episode week, five. Well, we have a message for next week, but then we're trans transitioning. Yeah, we're November, transitioning. by God's grace. I hope y'all still pray for us. Yes. Keep us yeah, in prayer. Yeah, and if, if y'all have, like, a topic that maybe right. you guys want us to touch on. We do right. request. What do you want to know? Like, we'll let us it. know. Yeah. Even if it's not on a Tuesday, we will make sure. We don't know everything, but like we say, yeah. we will share with you everything we do know. If you guys right. have... Um, we're not better, we just know better. Uh, yeah, right, right. Wait, give me some other quotes. <clears throat> do you ever have on people to talk with you? What is, oh, oh, oh. Do you ever have on people to talk with you? Oh, he means like in the corner, I think. I, we were thinking about doing that, Kevin. Um, uh, a guest maybe live? Maybe next month. Like, Do you mean like a guest oh. to join the live? Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, maybe maybe we'll do that. Like, like That would be something to do like during the week and stuff like, like that. Yeah, yeah, that would be dope. Do you ever have, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, we could definitely do that sometimes. That would be, that would be cool. have people, like a guest. Yeah, yeah, we we can get a guest live, yeah. yeah. And we definitely will um, plan for hey, that. Hey, 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 chill out, chill out. And decide how that's going to work. You guys stay away from the equipment. You guys are way too close. <laughs> Yeah, that would be awesome. He would like to, uh, Kevin would like to be on Oh, he's like talking about. Yeah, he's talking about. Yeah, I know, yeah. I know. I'm saying. Yeah. He, no, like, no, he said. No, he didn't mean on the corner. He didn't mean like he the meant live guest. Oh, you the... meant here, like in the house? Yeah. Right here, Kev? Yeah. It is good to hear both sides. And one day we'll have a, like a forum, like a QA. Yeah. Uh, public forum. We're supposed know. to be doing one this That's weekend. I didn't tell you guys about that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, there, 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 there. That, that's supposed to be a possibility this weekend that we were talking about. So. We might do our first life life talk live. Yeah. And if we are, we'll let you guys know. Yeah, we are actually planning to do that. Oh, we are you. planning to do that in the future. I know everybody got all crazy. We are actually planning to Can do that. Can you guys hear us still? <laughs> they definitely hear you, Wayne. Yeah. <laughs> You're right there with it. But yeah, um man, that's that's yeah. we're just we'll hang out until we fade to Gordon work. debates. Huh? Because Kev said like a debate. I said Gordon debates. Like a debate? Oh. Gordon does that. Good. He's like, <laughs> you gotta come with it though. You know what I'm saying? Man, um, <laughs> you gotta be two, cup of, two cups of coffee in it. Right. Was there anything you guys had questions on, um, or even, or even, or um, topic of forgiveness? We could talk about that. If you guys have any requests for topics that you want us to touch on, we are open to um, suggestions. Bye. Mandy, Mandy, perfect back. timing. Mandy's back. We're throwing out there the idea of you guys giving us suggestions for things that we can um, talk about. No, we didn't forget you, Brother Jamal, if you're still watching. We didn't forget you. I said, don't forget me. But, mm -mm. yeah. Oh, I didn't know he was on there. Mm -hmm. I think he was talking about, yeah. Mean G. Mandy said, Mean G. She laughing. I think she's laughing at you in the background. Cause he's back there. Did you miss the music okay. part, Mandy? I think she did. She we just were, got we back were playing on. Music. Yeah, we just got done with the music part. Oh. You missed Gordon's chocolate <laughs> Gordon's uh, he had Eminem, Eminem rant. Moment. He went in. <coughs> yeah, you guys are watching this. You can comment in the section. Tell us why Jesus is rele relevant to you in 2017. <clears throat> Next week we're gonna kind of recap on everything. Um, just I guess. There was a lot of questions asked throughout the series that I think I might address. Um, next week is also the 500 year anniversary to, anniversary of the Reformation. And next Tuesday is also Halloween night. So we got lots of things to talk about. We'll be right here. <laughs> Man. Are we up? At, at trick or treat time. <laughs> right here. Dress up? I'm going to dress up as a Christian. <laughs> <laughs> what does that look like? You <laughs> I do. Oh my gosh! I don't know. I don't know. Oh man! You can't pull that off. Anything. I can dress up as drop. I'm gonna dress up as my twin. Oh. How's everybody's week doing? Anybody want to talk about something? Anybody got something? 
we got, we got time today, cuz. <laughs> We've been live over an hour now, but, you know, it wasn't, because we had, well, technical difficulties in the beginning, but. Yup. Please, if you're still watching and you would like to uh, share this video with somebody that can relate to it, that is, that's relevant to them, um, feel free to share. We appreciate that. Got 11. We still got people out there. What's up? Y'all watching, but I can't see no comments. Comment in that comment section. Let me know you still breathing. What's up? This is, again, that, that moment after church when nobody wants to go home. Everybody's just sitting around wondering if uh, somebody brought some chicken and cornbread to church. I always be wondering after church, is this going to be one of them Sundays where we eat downstairs after church? <laughs> Taking communion and stuff. Well, I'll be getting mad hungry. Did communion be a tea sometimes for me. Trying to find the biggest cracker in there. I do. <laughs> I'm, I'm, in need of, I'm in need of Christ's body more than anyone else. Take a big one. Get a double portion of the cup just because I'm a little thirsty. <laughs> I don't believe that number. That number says 11 people are still alive, but I, I don't believe it. it. I, I don't believe it because nobody's saying nothing. We don't believe you. I have, just like I have 11. Now it's 12. Because everybody's done eating dinner. And Where y'all at? Where y'all at? Where y'all at? showing love. What's up, Erica? Hey, no, get out of my we, we ain't doing nothing. <laughs> nah, we just sitting here. I'm trying to spark up a conversation with somebody at the end. Do we have one brave volunteer? Is there anything that was unsettled? Um, things that maybe we can answer a, certain, answer a certain question that you might have concerning Jesus and the resurrection? Um, maybe it's something that you're dealing with, um, struggling with spiritually that you want to talk about or message us about something. Let us know. We're going to be... Supposedly, hopefully, we're going to be performing this this weekend. If you guys want to show up and uh, join us, um, we're going to be presenting some music and message. What do they need to see my eyes for? He's all in, so in the shadow with it. He's all in shadow with it. Like I said, like <laughs> we're going to be performing this weekend. Whatever. So I need to look in my eyes for. Rim low. Oh man. I'm waiting. What's up? Not old. What time is it? I think it's time. It's about that time. About that time. It's eight. Yo, we appreciate y'all showing up for real, for real. Every Tuesday, man. Every Tuesday, y'all, um, y'all yep. be showing up faithfully. And... I'm out of here, y'all. <laughs> Bye. He's gonna be the last one. I'm always the first one to leave. He's always still talking. You're just anti-social, that's all. And I'm the background music, so I have She's to... She's just that random person that sticks around. And he's just that random person that talks too much. Oh, <laughs> man. Come on. I just I just enjoy conversation, that's all. I'll talk about anything. Over some keys. Yeah, if y'all missed it, y'all can go back and hit the replay as soon as, we, as, soon as I hit this finish button. Y'all can go back and hit the replay. There was some good stuff presented today. We brought some truth to the table. Now it's your, yeah, it's your chance to go home and cut it up and dissect it. And go ahead and eat it up. What's up? Got kids staring right at me in my eyes and all that. Look at this. Look at them. What you got there? What is that dessert? Who's eating some good food right now? I know somebody's watching that's eating something good. What y'all eating right now? Look what I'm eating. The word of the Lord. Shaman bun. What y'all partaking of? Twizzlers. Alright, what, what we got? Who ate some good dinner tonight? We still got, we still got nine people with us. Yeah. What's up, I want to know what y'all ate tonight. We did. We ate, some, we ate some pasta tonight with um that was made with ground ground turkey Which and I still sausage. Didn't finish. I still Banging didn't with finish. some butter bread. I still mm. didn't finish. Tiff Tiff cooked it up. She chef tonight, as always. Mm -hmm. 
What's up, Britt? Wow, mother's still there? What? You must have some crazy either Wi-Fi or data to be watching this long. <coughs> Shout out to everybody that left and came back. <laughs> right. Because Facebook's letting you know we're still alive. I invited, like, everybody they would let me invite. I, like, right. harass people tonight. Like, I'm sorry in advance. But yeah, man, that, that's um, that concludes right. our well, October series. Yeah, that's about it. I mean, we still gonna come live Tuesday. We're gonna be next week. Yeah. Next Tuesday. Next so Tuesday. so stay tuned. You guys can um, hit us in the message inbox and uh, keep on commenting on the video. Share it with somebody you love. God bless you. Good night. We out. Peace.